Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. Sections of Jamaica starting to feel the outer bands of Hurricane Beryl. Forecasters suggest Hurricane Beryl could be the strongest hurricane to hit Jamaica. And 80% of shelters activated across the country. Thank you for joining us. I'm Shamela Pullen. Here are the details. A hurricane warning remains in effect for Jamaica as Beryl continues to move its way towards the country. The latest from the Met Service indicates that the eye is not as clearly as defined before and the system could wobble as it approaches Jamaica. The center of the hurricane is expected to be passing near or over the island's southern coastline from east to west between 12 noon and 8 p.m. today. The Met Office says there is a possibility Hurricane Beryl will hit Jamaica as a strong category for system. Next three to four hours, you could be getting some storm force winds, and then after that, hurricane force winds. It is going right over us, underneath, beside us. What so the projection is that it will go along the southern coastal lines. As it is now, from the 7 o'clock forecast, it is supposed to go along the southern coast. So the eye itself will go along the, co the southern coast. But if that is the case, it means we call something called a top right quadrant. And that is the air of the eye wall that has the maximum impact or the maximum weather and as such if that is the case that maximum air will come across Jamaica and of course we'll get dangerous winds we will get significant rainfall storm surges and it will be a tough one and forecasters are suggesting that hurricane Beryl could be the strongest hurricane to ever hit Jamaica that eye will get very close to the island today. We'll have to watch that closely. It's still maintaining Category 4 strength with 145 mile per hour winds sitting about 125 miles southeast of Kingston, Jamaica right now. Uh, they have had passes of major hurricanes in the last couple of years, but because the island is small, it's hard to get that direct hit when that eye comes on land. The last and only time that happened was Gilbert in 1988. That was the last major hurricane, so it's been more than four years uh, since they've had anything like this. You can see where that eye again gets very close. If it makes landfall, it would be on the southern half of the island. We're looking at storm surge up to nine feet. That's two to three meters. Heavy rain as well. Hurricane force winds starting up as we go through midday. All in Jamaica. Then the Cayman Islands are next going into tomorrow. And then as we head towards the end of the week, Mexico could see some of these impacts. Now, when we're talking about rain, this is a mountainous island. So you have all of this tropical moisture kind of hitting right as the land kind of comes up. When you force moisture up a mountain, that enhances the rainfall totals. So we could could be looking at up to a foot of rain that's 300 millimeters and that could cause flash flooding and mudslides in Jamaica. Now going forward we do have to watch the intensity very closely. There's some wind shear nearby. It's that wind energy upstairs in the atmosphere that could often kill hurricanes. Hurricanes hate it. So we could find this intensity starting to waver as we uh, go through the next day or so. We'll have to watch that closely but ocean temperatures are record warm so that could fuel it too. Local government minister Desmond McKenzie says 80% of shelters across the island are now activated. According to Mr. McKenzie, more than 53 shelters are now occupied. At the same time, he is appealing to residents of Port Royal to evacuate the area. Transportation will be provided for residents to the shelter at the National Arena. And Prime Minister Andrew Holness is again calling on Jamaicans living in flood-prone areas to relocate to a place of safety where he was speaking on TVJ Smile Jamaica earlier today. My um, continued advice to all Jamaicans is that, you know, it is not too late now um, to take a second look at your roof just to make sure that if you can do anything to keep it uh, firmly in place that you take those measures. Uh, I know there are many, many Jamaican households where uh, it is uh, it's roofing made of zinc sheeting. Um, there may not even be hurricane straps. Uh, you may want to, at this time, if you haven't done so, uh, if you have, you know, heavy blocks that you could start to put that on your roofing just to keep some weight on it so that you don't lose your roof. 
Um, I know most Jamaicans would have taken the opportunity. The Prime Minister says the measures implemented will help to mitigate damage. That would mean that there would be an earlier and swifter recovery after the hurricane. And that is the reason why we have invested so heavily in our informationalization campaign. Because the truth is that uh, the best way to recover is to prepare. And that is, in effect, the nature of being a resilient country. And we're now joined by Andrea Chisholm, who is at the Office of Disaster Preparedness and Emergency Management, ODPEM. She spoke with representatives just before midday. So we're now joined by local government minister Desmond McKenzie, who is actually fresh from a briefing with the staff at ODPEM. Minister, thank you so much for speaking with us. First of all, coming out of your briefing, what is the latest? Well, uh, so far I've been updated on the... The, the number of shelters we are close to now, some 60 odd shelters across the country. Um, my information also is that at least 85% of our shelters are in operation, and this is right across, right across the country. One of the concerns I have, and it came out of the meeting, and during that meeting I had a telephone conversation with the mayor of Kingston and the councillor, uh, for that section in East Kingston as it relates to Port Royal. Uh, two buses went to Port Royal from very early this morning. The Jamaica Fire Brigade was there, the team was there. The mayor spent close to an hour. The buses left Port Royal with probably one person in the bus. So again, we did make the provisions uh, for Port Royal, nobody responded. I understand, based on the discussion with the councillor, that some persons would have left yesterday voluntarily and would have gone into the shelters at the national arena. What we are getting so far is that there have been a number of, of um, roadblocks, uh, land slippage in sections of St. Andrew. I know that the main road from Kingston to Port Royal is liter literally impassable between the cemetery and the whole lighthouse. I'm concerned about that and the NWA is going to be moving as quickly as possible to have that clear. Uh, we are seeing um, rains um, just right across, um, you know, which is, is uh, we're seeing where lines are down in some areas in St. Catherine, we're seeing fallen trees. Uh, but basically what we are now beginning to see is the real work of this hurricane. And um, as I speak now, um, we have done all that we can in terms of preparedness. So what is left now is how are we going to start to pick up the pieces after the next couple of hours. I am a, a bit more comfortable because I am seeing where more, more persons in communities that are prone to flooding have been responding more to the, the call to leave communities. You still have those who don't want to leave and will give you all sorts of excuses. But basically, as I speak to you now, the information that we are getting does not yet start to speak to whole scale dislocation and concerns. And I believe as the system gets closer, we will get much more in-depth information. The, the command center is fully in operation. Uh, they have been in operation since last night. I spent a significant time here last night and I came back this morning and I'll be here right through. But I just want to say how much we are grateful to the efforts of the team, and I did indicate to the art pen management team how much we appreciate the efforts that they have been putting through. And I just want to use this opportunity again to say to persons, if you are in communities where it is vulnerable, you want to leave, you can call help. One eighty-eight help at PEM, and we will try and get to you. It is not too late. But so far, I am keeping. We are keeping our fingers crossed and hope that um, as the system gets closer, we will we will minimize as best as possible damage and most importantly, loss of life.
Thank you so much, Minister Mackenzie, local government minister. Let's now talk to Mr. Richard Thompson from Odpen. Mr. Thompson, could you just come this way, please? Minister, if you want to stand beside him, uh, that's fine. Uh, Mr. Thompson, let's pick up on the issue of shelters. Minister mentioned that about 85% of the shelters are opened. Any idea as to how many persons are in the shelters at this time? Well, not, not at this time, because what is happening now, as the, as the persons go into the shelter, the shelter managers have to log those. And, and the numbers are disaggregated. So you'll get women, children, men, that kind of age group disaggregation. And then that will come to us. So persons are gradually moving into the shelters because we gave the information earlier to say, look, system is getting closer to us. If you are in flood prone areas or low lying areas, move now to the shelters because we don't want a situation where at the impact, persons are trying to get to the shelter. That is, that is too late. Um, you only have to move if you have real emergency at that time. So persons are gradually moving into the shelters. Um, we, are, we are expecting up to probably six, six inches of rainfall, six to eight inches of rainfall, based on what the discussion that we had earlier with, with Evan Thompson from the Met Office. And that is significant. Um, also, we have a lot of coastal communities. And we, are, we will be seeing storm surges um, up to, up to nine, nine feet in terms of storm surge. We are start seeing a short person are seeing videos coming in out of Roselle. So that is what will be happening along the coast. And so we have a lot of, as an island state, we have a lot of coastal communities. So we have been saying to persons, just move away from the coast, get into the shelters, and, 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 and be safe as, as possible. So persons are moving. And so we'll keep you up to date throughout the day once we, are, we have crunched those numbers um, and, and the disaggregation as to what the shelter population, population is like. But the good thing is that persons are actually going into the shelters. Over in Clarendon, some residents are on edge due to concerns of flooding. Dwayne Anderson is in that parish. Things are still pretty quiet here in Clarendon. In fact, I've seen more specks of sunlight than I've seen rain since I've been in the parish this morning. But that is not to say people are not taking heed. In fact, I've spoken to more people who are taking measures than, they, than those who aren't. Persons are taking steps to batten down their homes. Persons are trying to secure the animals. And persons even managed to find a few shops which are open to get last minute supplies. Here are their views. Yes. Five years, but me not leave me here. I'm in Chelton. So where are you from. coming from? I'm in Town. So where are you going? So you're up a hill. You're up a hill. All right, bro. So you're not taking no chance? I'm not taking chance. I don't know for them, but they're not taking I go in morning. Yes, yes. Why yes. are you decided yes. to leave? Yes. 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 I want to place my grill up for them good pen grill up, you know. My food may have been a bag here, you know. Can I say I'm a cup and some of it? No, 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 Right now, I'm in Portland Cottage in Clarendon. It is a seaside community located on the southernmost tip of the parish. And right now, I'm specifically at the Portland Cottage Primary School, which is being used as an emergency shelter. And I'm with the supervisor here, Miss Williams. Miss Williams, how many people we have here right now? Okay, we have one registered right now, 34 people. And how many can be in the facility hold? Over 200. What would be your advice? Obviously, our space. What would be your advice to the residents here? In the okay, I'd advise them to come out to the shelter because it's the most safe place right now. With a category of five hurricane coming, they need to come to the shelter to be safe. It's time for a break. Stay with us. More stories when we return. Welcome back to the Midday News. In Portland, dark skies have been the order of the day. We have Anthony Lug in that parish. Thank you. So I'm currently in St. Margaret's Bay here in Portland. And as you can see behind me, there is a heavy duty equipment uh, carrying out some last minute drain cleaning activities. Now, yesterday afternoon, when our news team spoke with the chairman of the Portland Municipal Corporation, he informed us that all the drains in the parish were clean. It's still not clear 
why these equipment had to come out this afternoon to carry out this work. Now, earlier today, I was in Port Antonio. Uh, not much movement in the town of Port Antonio. Um, however, about an hour ago, the municipal corporation representatives went into the town and took the homeless people from off the streets. We're being told they were being taken to shelters and other areas uh, here to just ensure that they remain safe. Now, the authorities are here going through the area. The security forces are also on the street uh, carrying out their regular patrols and residents are basically staying off the streets. Now, we can't stress that the government has implemented the Disaster Risk Management Act and that is now in effect. And as a result, uh, persons that should be on the street are only essential workers. And basically in Portland, what, what we're seeing here, residents are adhering to those legislation and that regulation implemented by the government. Now we will be monitoring the situation and we will be providing updates in subsequent newscasts. Until then, it's back to you in studio. And in the corporate area, despite the curfew which came in effect at 6 a.m., vendors were seen on the road. Sander Williams have been roving the corporate area. Here in the New Haven community, signs of potential flooding are still evident despite a drain cleaning exercise earlier this week. We visited one of the drains that were cleaned on Monday and while overgrown bushes and debris have been removed, the remnants have been left on the banking. It's been light rainfall since morning and already at least one house has started to flood. Roaming the community, we observed a pig farmer busy relocating his animals to higher ground at an abandoned building nearby. Some residents have started to leave the community to the nearby shelter at the Edith Dalton High School, but others who have no intention of leaving have been busy securing their properties with sandbags. I will continue to roam the community and as well as surrounding environments and provide updates in subsequent newscasts. It's back to you in studio. Earlier, we reported that persons have already started to go to shelters across the island. Our news team visited the National Arena and spoke with a Red Cross representative and resident. I am 83 years old, as I tell you, and I usually have had now. And being lonely in a home by yourself, you know, you get scared, and the doctor always let me know that excitement can bring on back heart attack and so. So that's why I said I'll come and stay at the shelter. I have 12 persons registered, including one child, a three-year-old. So we have five females and uh, that would be what, seven males? Seven males. Right, seven males. Um, we have various types, but you have different, different personalities. And I'm seeing some who are in need of medical attention, yes, beyond what we are able to do as Red Crosses. Um, but we're here nonetheless to ensure that they're comfortable, they're in a secure environment and they're able to relax until later. Hopefully the storm will pass sooner than soon and persons will be able to get back to their normal lives. Despite hurricane warnings, Coronation Market in downtown Kingston has been quite busy with buyers and sellers. Carrie Ann Simpson reports. As the effects of Hurricane Burial is being felt in some parts of Jamaica, shoppers were busy stocking up food items in downtown Kingston. Um, necessary cabbage, cucumber, carrots, tomato, yeah. all the necessary goodies that we need. Vendors in the market insist on making it business as usual despite the government announcing a curfew that is now in effect until 6 this evening. We don't swear to do my business paper that work. We have a day so we secure my things then. Even though you have a category 4 storm at really our matter. doorstep. It doesn't really matter me a day or so. Because I have some my life set. I have some my money then. I don't let my money. You have to watch my goods then. At the risk of your life? My life all right. God knows how to come my life. I'm not taking my life, all right. Look what we have in this. 
Looting is also a major concern for the vendors. I see. So you're gonna stay here and ride out the storm? Yeah, man. They're gonna ride out the storm and be very high, man. Are you sure you'll be safe here, sir? No, I'm not safe. You're not giving back nothing. You're not giving back nothing. You're still in a bed, see you where you are. So you're going to stay and ride out the storm? I'm not going to ride out the storm. I have some living up. I have some living I have some living up. 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 So if it's possible, I'll ride out the storm. I'll ride out the storm. I'll ride out the storm. Kerry and Simpson, TVJ News. The Ministry of Health says the necessary arrangements have been made for hospitals to address any eventualities during the passage of Hurricane Beryl. Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton visited the emergency departments of three public hospitals on Tuesday. The big one being KPH and Victoria Jubilee, and you would have heard from them that they are ready, they are prepared, a and &E is ready, the staff arrangements are in place, they have had to send on some people who can go home, still high occupancy, but A&E, which is the most important, uh, is ready uh, to treat with any eventuality. Uh, the same at Bustamante Hospital for Children. Earlier this morning, I had a meeting with the emergency um, center of the ministry, and we communicate with all hospitals across the country. Those hospitals are ready. Uh, they have put provisions in place in terms of staffing, in terms of dietary, food both for staff and patients, in terms of water provision, in terms of general. And Dr. Tufton says while all public hospitals will remain open, they are operating in emergency mode. If you're a pregnant woman, mother, expectant mother, and you're within a month or so of delivery, stay close to a hospital where you can deliver if necessary because the change in the weather pattern, um, the, the trauma around that could induce early delivery. Um, if you are uh, hypertensive, diabetic, any chronic illness, stock up on your medication and NHF is allowing for medication to be dispensed with even if it's not totally due. The National Solid Waste Management Authority, NSWME, says it is in the process of removing garbage from communities ahead of, hurricane, of the passage of the hurricane. NSWME says the focus is on areas prone to flooding, such as Seaview Gardens, New Haven and Bullbay in St. Andrew, and Rocky Point in Clarendon, Clarendon hope, among others. This is a Hope River when the rains and it run right into the Hagley Park Road which is another Hagley Park River when it rains and it end up down at Marcos Garvey Drive so in trying to save flooding on Marcos Garvey Drive we're making sure that all the loose garbage along this corridor is taken up we have done a quite a bit of raking for the last hour we've been raking up the area with all that uh, litter that took place in this space we have getting it onto a truck now and we'll be getting it out and we're going to work right up to the point when we consider it unsafe. Mr. Gordon is urging citizens not to put out garbage at this time. Please properly containerize your garbage in this time. Don't put out the garbage during the rain. Go containerize it and keep it inside. We want to spare the country of any potential disaster. And one of the things that can cause it is when we have the loose garbage clogging up the waterways and the drains, and it causes flooding that leads to destruction of property, loss of life, etc. And that's the Midday News. I'm Shamela Pullen. Join us at 1 for continued coverage on Hurricane Beryl. On behalf of the entire news team, good afternoon.